What's up everyone, my name's Robbie. This is Robbie and Manila, and today we're talking about the best real estate sector, ETF. So today's the second video in my series about the best sector ETFs. I'm going over the best ETF in each sector. There are 11 different sectors. If you missed the first one, that's the healthcare sector ETF video. Take a look at that. And of course, I'm gonna be coming up with more over the next week, so make sure you tune in and watch those. So real quick, why would you even care about which sector ETF is good and which one's bad? Well, first off, some people like to invest tactically, so maybe they want to go overweight in a certain sector. Maybe, for example, you think that the real estate sector has been undervalued for a while and has good fundamentals, and or maybe it's got good technicals, and you think that this year or next year it's gonna be a great time for real estate and there's gonna be a lot of growth. So maybe you wanna overweight real estate or maybe you want to have a large part of your portfolio in real estate. So it depends on how you invest, but there are different reasons why people end up wanting to have a certain sector in their portfolio. If you wanna see this visually, this is all the different returns of the sectors in different years. So here we have 2020, had real estate due in 2020. Well, we go down here and it was not a very good return for the year. It was a negative 2.2% return and the S&P had a 18.4% return. So the underperformed if you overweighted just in real estate. Now, if you look to right now, year to date, real estate has done better than the S&P, 15.3% versus 23.3%. So like I said, certain sectors are gonna outperform other sectors in certain time periods. So we're gonna be comparing five different real estate sector ETFs in this video. So we have a lot to go over. Let's go ahead and let's get this thing started. Now, like I said before, we're going over five different ETFs in this video. We're gonna go through those. We're gonna pick a winner. Then I'm gonna show you what it looks like versus the S&P 500 return. Then I'm gonna do a little bit of technical analysis on it. And that's the video. So here we go. The five different ETFs we're going over today include the Spider Dow Jones REIT ETF, which is ticker RWR, the Real Estate Select Sector Spider Fund, which is XLRE, the Schwab US REIT ETF, SCHH, Vanguard Real Estate Index Fund ETF shares, VNQ, and the Investco S&P 500 Equal Weight Real Estate ETF, EWRE. So those are the ones we're going over today. Here we have a comparison of all of those different ETFs that I just talked about. As you can see here, each column is its own ETF. RWR is here, XLRE is here, SCHH is here, and so on. First thing I want to do, let's take a look at the expense ratio to start off. First off here, we have RWR with an expense ratio of 0.25%, XLRE with an expense ratio of 0.12%, SCHH with an expense ratio of 0.07%, VNQ 0.12%, and EWRE 0.40%. So off the bat, the first thing I like to do is say, okay, well, which of these has kind of a too high of an expense ratio? Which one would I want to basically make sure if I did pick the CTF, it needs to outperform or do something amazing to justify a higher expense. So for example, EWRE has a 0.4% expense, whereas CHH only has a 0.7% expense. So it's a lot more money. Well, from an expense ratio, it's multiple times more to have this one than this one. So this one better be able to justify its expense ratio comparatively. That's the way I'm looking at this. Now let's look at the weighting scheme of these ETFs. So here we have the market cap weighted RWR, XLRE market cap weighted, SCHH market cap weighted, VNQ market cap weighted. EWRE is the only equally weighted ETF we have in this one. If you're not sure what an equally weighted ETF is versus market cap weighted ETF, just think of it like a larger company would have more weight in a market cap weighted ETF. So if you had Apple in your portfolio, because Apple is one of the biggest companies in the world, it's gonna have a larger piece of your portfolio than a small company. But if you had, for example, this EWRE equally weighted fund, Apple would be the same weighting as all the other companies. Hopefully that makes sense. So moving on, next thing we wanna see are the yields. So maybe you're a dividend investor, maybe you like income. So let's take a look here. Distribution yield for RWR is 3.10%. That's a really good yield for an ETF like this. So I'm liking that for sure. XLRE, 2.92%, also a very good yield. SCHH has a smaller yield, actually, so I would want this to be able to have a much higher return, hopefully, 
because it doesn't have as much yield as these two do. VNQ has an, a decent yield and EWRE has a decent yield, well, has a good yield. So off the bat, SCHH, it doesn't get a strikeout yet. I wanna see how the performance is. Is it been able to outperform with a lower yield? So I'm gonna consider, make that's part of the consideration essentially. If we look at the fundamentals next, is there anything glaringly different in these different ETFs? Well, let's see, we have price to earnings ratios between 37 and 42. These PE ratios are much higher than the average PE ratio of the S&P 500. So right off the bat, you might think, well, maybe real estate's overvalued. You'd wanna take a look at the historic PE ratio is it selling at multiples much more than it has in the past? And maybe that's a bad sign for real estate in general. But here I'm not seeing anything crazy. Like this doesn't have a, a 42 and this doesn't have a 100, right? So there's no huge differences or discrepancies. Book value. So RWR has a, uh, is cheaper on a book value perspective, but more expensive on a price to earnings perspective. So these are just little things that you're looking at. Is anything kind of weird looking here? For me, everything looks totally fine. I don't see anything that's staring at me in the face. Moving on here to the Morningstar rankings. We can actually see that Morningstar is giving RWR only a two star, but it's giving XLRE a five star. So that's a huge difference. Now we're gonna take that into consideration. Why is that? Well, we'll take a look at the returns in a few but that might be a huge deal. SCHH also has a two star, VNQ has a four and EWRE has a four. So what am I seeing so far? Well, basically the second cheapest of these funds, which is XLRE, is doing really good in most of their star ratings, which I'm really liking that one. So let's take a look at the returns and see if it's justified. Let's first hone right in on to XLRE because that's the one I'm kind of focusing on now to see if that's gonna be the one that's gonna win this one. We have a three year performance of 18.07%. It is the highest out of all of these. EWRE is a close second on the five year. It's also winning the five year as well. So, so far XLRE is looking like it's probably gonna be the winner in this one. This might be a quick one. Taking a look at the portfolio, how are the different market capitalizations in this portfolio weighted? Well, XLRE doesn't have any really giant companies in it. So it's going to have more large, medium, and actually just large and medium cap companies, not even any small. Taking a look first at the portfolio holdings, how many stocks are in each of these? Well. XLRE has 32 stocks in it. So it's one of the most focused portfolios of these. EWRE is the other one that's really focused. These other ones, for example, SCHH has 143 companies. So it's way more diversified. Looking at the market cap weightings, XLRE has no giant companies in it. And actually none of these have any giant companies in it. So essentially there's no real estate companies that are considered giant market cap sizes. But XLRE does have one of the, actually the highest of the large caps. And then for mid cap or medium cap companies, it's also mostly weighted there. So XLRE is mostly large and medium with no small. RWR is getting much more of a broad piece of the real estate market because it's even got some micro in here. Same with SCHH and VNQ. So XLRE essentially has less holdings, but more focused. Now I have to ask myself, am I okay with that? And I am, I'm totally fine with it. So I'm gonna go back up here and quickly take a look at the top 10 holdings. So here I have for XLRE, American Tower Group, Simon Property Group, biggest mall operator in the country. Looking at the other ones like RWR also has Simon Property in it, SCHH has Simon Property. So a lot of these have similar holdings. Maybe they're weighted more to one or the other. EWRE was the equally weighted one. Of course, it's got a similar weighting to all of their companies because it's equally weighted. They're gonna to try to keep the weightings as equal as possible. But at the end of the day, I think we all know which one I'm gonna pick and XLRE is the one, it's the second cheapest. It's got the best returns. It's the winner in my opinion. So did XLRE beat the S&P 500 recently? Let's take a look. So this is the return of the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, VOO in blue versus XLRE in orange. And as you can see, the S&P 500 has done much better than XLRE has. Does that mean you shouldn't invest in XLRE? No, it doesn't. It depends on what you think is gonna happen in real estate going forward. Do you like the fundamentals of the real estate sector? Do you think economically there are tailwinds that are gonna help the real estate sector? 
Now let's take a look at the technical analysis of this ETF. So what's going on with XLRE? So starting from about January of 2021, it was in a uptrend channel, breaking down through that channel in around early September of 2021. It continued down towards its support area here of 44.50, tested it a few times, and then had a really big bounce way up back into the 48 dollar area. It's currently testing $48. And so you're going to want to take a look if you're going to try to time buying this ETF, what's going to happen in this area? Does it end up breaking through? Watch the volume. If there's a lot of volume, that is a good sign. But RSI here is not doing so much. And also MACD is starting to turn over and go down, which is also not necessarily a great signal. So if I was trying to find an entry price to buy this and hold it for a while, basically I would wait to see what happens in this little resistance area of 48. And then if it does not break up through 48, I would watch to see if it heads back down to the support area. And if it bounces here, then maybe 44 would be a good time to buy it. So that's all we have for the video. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, this is a series. So Take a look at my other videos as they come out. It'll be coming out over the next couple of weeks. So please watch those. And if you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe to see future videos similar to this. And I have another video coming up. It's on the end screen. Please click that coming up right now.